قل ما كنت بدعا من الرسل وما أدري ما يفعل بي ولا بكم إن أتبع إلا ما يوحى إلي وما أنا إلا نذير مبين قل أرأيتم إن كان من عند الله وكفرتم به وشهد شاهد من بني إسرائيل على مثله وشهد شاهد من بني إسرائيل على مثله فآمن واستكبرتم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين with me today Rabbi Daniel Lappin he's truly one of the great Bible scholars of America and Rabbi we're talking about the secrets of the Hebrew that reveal uh, why conditions are in the world in which we live. There are only two biblical nations that have the name of God, El, in their names. Uh, Yisrael, that's Israel, and of course Yishmael, the Arabs. Is this a coincidence? Well, of course, we must remember that in the Lord's language, in Hebrew, uh, there is no word for coincidence. And the general rule is that if there is no word for a concept in the Hebrew language, then that concept doesn't exist. It's a false concept. Oh. Um, there are two people, and this is what's so interesting. When God uh, said to Hagar that she's going to have a son, uh, God actually said what this child has to be named. He has to be named Ishmael. And when a Jacob's name was changed from Jacob, to Israel or, or Yisrael, that was also God speaking. So it's only two people who became nations whose names were given to them by God himself and whose names contain the word God, uh, Ishmael and Israel. Those are the two nations. Now, it's kind of interesting because um, uh, Israel means um, he will make God his master. That's literally what the word means. You can actually hear the middle part has the SR sound, Yisrael. The SR sound is the sound from which later on other languages develop the idea of master, like the word sir or sire, always an SR sound, or, or even the Russian czar or even Caesar, always an SR sound coming from this Yisrael idea. He will make God his master. And that is, surely, is that not the essence of the Judeo-Christian tradition? Absolutely. We will make God the boss. That's right. That's what it's about. Now let's take a look and see what Ishmael means. Ishmael means God will hear him. Well, not surprisingly, Arabs pray, Muslims pray more than any other people. And five times a day they pray, constantly, because part of their basic heritage that's locked into their name and into their identity is this idea that God will hear them and it's, it's a tremendous advantage they have because we have to be on the right track for God to hear our prayers mm -hmm. but God listens to them in a different way so Comment eux ils disent Dieu Allah, c'est le même mot, Allah, ça vient de El, comme beaucoup de mots arabes viennent de l'hébreu, Allah. Chez l'Israël, je pense chez Ishmael. Vu que Dieu, de façon pareille, a donné son nom à Ishmael, comme il a donné à Israël. Le nom de Dieu, c'est El. Et il y a un seul peuple au monde qui s'appelle, qui a dans son nom le, monde, le nom de Dieu. El, c'est Israël. Il y en a un deuxième, comme Israël, c'est qui Ishmael. Le Rabbi Hanvital, un des plus grands kabbalistes de tous les temps, écrit il y a 500 ans, de plus il est fils d'Abraham, donc il est béni. Et Abraham a, bé, a, de, a imploré Dieu, béni lui, il est fané Ishmael, que béni Dieu, et Dieu l'exauce, il est béni, il est circoncis, donc il a une alliance, Brit, c'est une alliance avec Dieu, il sert même Dieu que nous, donc il a du mérite. Un homme, nous sommes tous des âmes du premier homme. Alors que tous les, les autres êtres humains sont appelés des béné Adam, des fils de l'homme. Nous sommes une seule entité. Maintenant, il y a un peuple qui est aussi appelé Adam. C'est Ishmaël. Il est appelé Père et Adam. Homme, c'est un homme. C'est la seule religion au monde qui sert le même Dieu que nous. La seule. Le Dieu d'Abraham. Tu en connais une autre Tu me fais une grimace comme ça. 
Ils servent avec leur fils aussi. Il y a le père, le fils, Saint-Esprit, la Marie, la Vierge. Ils ont toute une collection là-bas. Eux, rien que lui. Abraham a prié Dieu. Bénis Ishmaël Et Dieu a béni Ishmaël. Il est béni. Ce peuple qui fait abrite Mila. Ce peuple qui a droit à être en terre d'Israël à la place de nous. À l'endroit du temple. Aucun autre peuple n'a pu y être. Longtemps en tout cas. Donc au niveau des mérites, il est beaucoup plus grand que les autres. Meanwhile, I would like to give the word a little bit uh, to uh, uh, Abraham son. Uh, could you say a uh, comment on the issue a little bit? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'm uh, Benjamin Abramson. I, I am an Orthodox uh, Hasidic Jew from Israel. Uh, and I work as a historian or um, a kind of consultant to the court that, uh, in Jerusalem that Rabbi Hollander is talking about. Uh, most of the people here know me from my endless discussions about uh, the similarities between Islam and, and Jewish customs. Uh, I, I, I like very much to talk about common prayer customs between Islam and, and Judaism, about the similarities in architecture between the masjid and the uh, synagogue, between the similarities of the calendar, the, the Jewish uh, uh, holidays and, and customs. But it's clear to me that there's more than just similarities, that, uh, that they obviously go back to a common root and a common faith. When talking about a, a common uh, heritage, uh, in our Jewish literature we are taught that there is such a thing as a common faith a fundamental religion which all men are born into and this is a basic faith which is obligated on all mankind in the past we've called it by different names the uh, Yirei Shemaim which means the fear of he the people who have fear of heaven Gertoshav or Bnei Noach the children of uh, Noah or during Hellenist times in Greek it was called Theos uh, and according to the school of thought of Rabbi Ben Mosig, Uh, this fundamental faith is also called by the name Islam. In the Torah, uh, everywhere that the word Kenite, Keni, uh, which means the children of Jethro, uh, is, is translated to uh, the Aramaic translation in Targum uh, the word is used is the word that is used is Salamai or Muslimai. Some have suggested that this refers to the great number of non-Jewish believers who came to sacrifice the Qurban Shlamim in Jerusalem together with the Jews. Salamai, Muslimai, Muslimi. This could be a clear indication in, in our literature that Islam is an ancient religion dating back to the time of the Second Temple or, uh, or even earlier. And if Islam's roots, if the roots of Islam are the same as what we call Bnei Noach, then for us, it is much older. This is the religion of Noah. This is the religion of Adam himself. The, the closeness of, of Islam and Judaism has always been understood by biblical scholars un, until recent years. The close relationship with the Jews, the, the Ten Lost Tribes, uh, the, the Arabs, the Rechabites, all this was assumed to be true. It was only with the advent of German revisionists like Wellhausen and Buchler and others who, that this began to change. They introduced ideas that Islam had something to do with worshipping the moon, rocks, or some asteroid that fell. But devout, Jew, devout Jews know that this is not true. It's a fact of Jewish law that we believe that Muslims and Muslims are perfect monotheists. They worship the same God. It is mentioned by name in the original scriptures. The Old Testament, according to Christian authorities, was preserved in the Hebrew language and the New Testament in Greek scriptures, Greek language. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, 
I'm sure Brother Swaggart would appreciate it because I thought I heard him say that he knows Hebrew and he knows Greek. In the Hebrew language, it says, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei baynat Jerusalem. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. The word muhammadim is muhammad im im i am im im is a plural of respect in hebrew you can't associate with the word muhammad you read it a thousand times all together lovely all together lovely or let's say in another language, the praised one, the praised one. Muhammad means the praised one. But he said the praised one, the praised one. You can't think that he's talking about Muhammad. Though Muhammad means the praised one. You have no right to translate names of people. <laughs>